Welcome. In this lecture in Linear Data Analysis, which has multiple sessions, we'll begin our exploration of vector spaces, what they are, some of their properties, and how we can represent them. Well, the main concepts are, what is a vector space? What axioms or requirements does a vector space have to satisfy? What are some of the properties that a vector space has? And what are some of the relations to a matrix? This topic is something that we'll be exploring in great depth over a long period of time. A sample problem that you can think of through this lecture is how can we describe a space of data vectors specifically? So let's begin with a, an example problem. Suppose that we're given these three vectors. And the question is, what space do these vectors live in? And there are two natural answers for the number three. The first is that there are three entries to each one of these vectors. And the second is that e there are three of these vectors. And it might seem immediately that, well, they live in a space of three. If we observe that this vector is a simple multiple of this vector, we might say, well, no, we're going to say that two vectors which differ only by a scale factor are in some sense the same vector. And if we use that kind of reasoning, we would say that these live in a 2D space. So what this means is we need to clarify for ourselves what we mean by a space of vectors. So here's the concept. Vector has many meanings. It comes from the Latin vectus, which means to carry. And in advanced geometry, a vector carries us from one point in a curved space to another point in a curved space. And it does that, too, in Euclidean space, which we refer to as having a flat geometry. A minimalist idea of a vector is an ordered set of real numbers. We'll go beyond that, and we'll say that it's an object in a linear space. And now we're going to have to explore what we mean by linear in greater detail. The way that we'll write these is we'll use mainly the symbols V, W, and U, um, we'll use others if we need them, but we can largely get by with these three. And we'll put these double, these double bars on them to indicate that these are spaces. And there are two ways that we'll frequently use to define them. One is constructively, and that is we'll give some examples and some rules. And the other is by restriction, where we'll say what isn't in the space. So constructively, in those previous examples, we might give instances. And then in restrictions, what we do is we give a larger space. Usually that larger space is really easy to describe. And then we have some rules for defining what it means for a vector to live in a smaller space. We're going to use some terminology that comes from the programming language MATLAB that we'll use a lot. And we'll refer to the number of entries of a vector as its size. Some um, authors will use the term length, some will use dimension. We're going to use size. We'll have them, uh, each entry is going to be a real number, and real numbers are mathematically a field, and we'll write this as R with this double um, post on it. And if a vector has M entries, we'll say that its size is M, and that corresponds well to what we would type into MATLAB. And what we'll write this as is we'll say a vector v, for example, that has m entries is this is in the space of real numbers that have m entries. So this is the notation that we'll use so that we can tersely describe what we mean by m entries. One example that we're all familiar with um, from geometry is the plane. And we would describe this as a vector space of r squared, which is vectors with two entries, and each entry can be a real number. Let's go through a quick example to see how something can have a size 2, but only one what mathematicians describe as a degree of freedom. Suppose that we describe a vector x as having any real number in its first entry and having a 0 in its second entry. This is definitely of size 2. And we say it's one degree of freedom because it only takes a single real number to describe it. We could have a vector y that likewise has a zero in its first entry and the second entry is any real number. And in both of these cases, we would say they have one degree of freedom. What I would say is that there's an important sense in which they live in a one-dimensional vector space. 